I'm not sure that anyone thought this product was ever gonna see the light of day. Inside this box, I've got this giant stack of retro game cartridges. Got some Namco games, Technos, Pico, Interplay, Mega Cat, and Atari games that I'm gonna be trying out on the Evercade handheld game console designed specifically for these older abandonware types of games. Most of these I actually am not familiar with because as a 1986 baby, I might actually be too young. But we're gonna give it a shot today and I'm even gonna have my son uh, try out some of them so he can see what gaming was like in the Stone Age. And this video is gonna be brought to you by Private Internet Access. It's a VPN that encrypts all your internet traffic so you can use a safe, protected IP. You can connect up to five devices at once. They've got Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS, and Linux clients. Their internet kill switch keeps you in control of your connection and you can try it out risk-free with their 30-day money-back guarantee at the link in the video description. Let's have a look at the features of this thing. The reaction to it has been a little bit mixed. I'm a fan of the delightfully retro look but I've seen some uh, misgivings about particularly the shape and size of the D-pad. Very clicky left and right triggers. A, B, X, Y, kind of SNES style. And curiously, it's got a 16 by nine display when a lot of these older games that you'd be playing would end up uh, pillar boxed in that case. This is another interesting feature though. In addition to being a handheld, the Evercade SC has a mini HDMI port so that you can actually run it out to your TV. Let's have a look at the accessories. Oh yes, that's right. So it comes in a couple of different configurations. The starter pack comes with one cartridge and the premium pack, the one that I have, actually comes with three cartridges. So between all of this, I've got 10 10 game packs each with anywhere between six and 20 games on the cartridges. Dash doesn't eat that kind of foam, it's okay, baby. Turns out this is the on-off switch. That makes sense. Flipping it around to the bottom, we've got volume up, volume down, a headphone jack, and a USB micro B port. So that's gonna take care of charging the 2000 milliamp hour internal battery that'll get net you, they claim, around four to five hours of playtime. The console uses a 1.4 gigahertz quad core processor and the screen resolution is 480 by 272. Apparently you are emulating the games on this handheld, but the emulators are under license from Evercade. So it's all like basically legit. So I'm gonna let you pick. What game or game pack should we try first? Okay, all right. We're gonna get some super spike volleyball and some dodgeball. Double Dragon 2, The Revenge. Display is not terrible, not great. Um, definitely TNAF. Horizontal viewing angles are pretty good though. Like it's definitely functional for a single player experience. You can see there's a two player option, but it's not actually two player in its current state. So they left the two player option in the game in case there's a future console that they can enable it with. But this is a single player only experience. I would describe the sound output from the device as not amazing, but good enough, given the kinds of musical scores that we're listening to here. And definitely loud. You gotta stop kicking backwards when you uh, got enemies in front what of you there, kiddo. To? Honestly, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are you ready to try another game? Yeah, that one's hard. Games used to be hard. Now, I'm not sure how to get back into the menu here. Menu, so... push menu. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, See? fair enough. This is cool. Like most emulator software, it's got full support for save states. Is this a super dodgeball? Sure. Yeah. 1989. That's what it is. Oh, start. Yeah, now who can't find the buttons? <laughs> Sup now. I gotta say the emulation does not look good on this one. There is a lot of like flickering that I'm pretty sure is not supposed to be there. Okay. Not all old games were good. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh, I think I understand. So you're the green players. Yeah, you gotta watch out for the guys that are wearing the white shirts. Okay, you gotta stop hitting your own guys here, all right? Boo! Good, see you right in the face. I can't see myself playing this for longer than about 45 minutes. I wanna try Battle Cars 1993. Ew. What do you mean, ew? <laughs> I said, ew. <laughs> da, 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 da. In the age of hour long tutorial segments of games, I, I do miss sometimes the whole just like, hey, pop the game in the console and play. But 
I have no idea what's going on. I'd say if you're after licensed versions of these games, which are actually kind of hard to get your hands on these days, the hardware is not bad for the price. So it's 79 US dollars for the one game pack version, and then it's 99 for the three game pack version. And then the additional packs are, I think, $12 each or something like that, I wanna say. Let me double check that. $20 each. It certainly doesn't hold up to modern AAA gaming, but for something to just kind of goof around with in your pocket if you're into retro games, I've seen much worse value propositions. Okay, here's the real question though. Yeah. If I tell you you've only got an hour to play video games, do you play with this or do you play with the Switch or a VR or whatever else? Switch. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought too. Costs a lot more though. So thanks for checking this out. I think it's available for pre-order now. So we're gonna have that linked in the video description. And we'll also have, of course, our sponsor, Private Internet Access down there. Go check those guys out.